Today we're excited to announce that Alamo Music is officially a heritage guitar dealer, uh, taking guitars built in one very historic building and bringing them into another very historic building to show you what they're all about, so stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom swag. And check out our podcast, The Fredboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So we're pretty excited about this. Heritage uh, makes some fantastic guitars, and we've been excited to get them in. And now uh, some of them have arrived. They're here. We've been shooting for this for quite a while and kind of sealed the deal at NAMM, and probably one of the most exciting things about our NAMM trip. Mm -hmm. um, and it was cool because it kicked it off. That was like our first thing that we got done, and then I was like, all right, we're done. <laughs> so it's just coasting from here. Um, right? But yeah, very, very excited to have these guitars. We've been fans for a long time. We've mm -hmm. played them at other places and other shops and seen players and watched videos. Now we have them, and to start, we got kind of some of their classic stuff, but uh, very excited for what's also coming down the road. If you're not familiar with Heritage, uh, first of all, have you been living under a rock since 1985 or what? Um, but Heritage was started in 85 by some former Gibson employees. Uh, Gibson historically made the guitars that uh, they are known for in Kalamazoo at this uh, factory on Parsons Street, and they left. It's actually kind of interesting. Do you know why they left? Hmm. Gibson left because the factory was too big for them, um, and they went to Nashville, and uh, you know now they've had to like expand that factory. Anyways, uh, so where Heritage is made is that historic factory, and since '85 they have been producing these classic designs that these you know builders were already building. They they didn't want to uproot their families and leave Michigan, and you know Dave, our buddy in Michigan, would say like, why would you ever leave? And so they didn't, and they stayed there making guitars. Um, and they are great. They're fantastic. And the thing that you ought to understand about Heritage is really it's a boutique company. I mean, it's a smaller shop. They produce fewer guitars. There is a certain attention to detail um, and specificity that they can do uh, with the models, but they do them at what I think is considered a, a good value you know, when it comes to price and some cool options, which yeah. I'll kind of get into with this one. Um, so should we just jump right in? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm holding uh, this very familiar looking shape. This is the standard series H150 in uh, Dirty Lemon Burst. Dirty Lemon Burst. Dirty Lemon Burst. I love that color. Yeah, it's pretty cool. One of the things, and I'll say right off the bat, that I think is really cool is if you love this guitar and you're like, Chris Cooper, I want to get that. I want to get it with a Bigsby. You can, and it's the same price. That price, by the way, currently is $25.99. Uh, price subject to change. Check out our website, talentmovies.com. But um, it's a fantastic guitar, and it has a lot of upgrades over what you would typically see at this price point from this style of guitar. So you've got select tone woods on this guitar. Um, you've got fantastic finish. It does all nitro finish. It's 59 Seymour Duncan uh, humbuckers that are in there. We've got locking. Uh, no, not on this one, on the other one. But um, really high-end uh, bridge and uh, stop bar tailpiece. Your typical setup, I kind of, I would never take the little thing off mine because it's, you know, 59, but yeah. I kind of like the clean look of not having it. Um, the pit guard's very cool. I like how they have done their own thing where it's following the line of the cutaway. You've got your traditional trapezoid inlays on a really nice rosewood fingerboard. Um, and then up to the Heritage headstock, uh, which is a little narrower, straighter string pull, less potential binding, um, and really nice tuners on it. Yeah, H150, you know, that's one of the guitars that I think recently some very, very good players that we both kind of follow mm -hmm. online and on social media, um, seen some amazing players kind of thrown down on this thing. Uh, I think Heritage, obviously they've been around, They've got the story, they got the history, but right now feels like this sort of blossoming a little bit with how much attention they're getting. Right. Um, and this guitar, in this finish in particular, both standard version and the custom core version, I've seen it all over the place and I just, I love it. You're going to hear all of these, but I, I do want to say some intangibles that don't come through necessarily with the playing. 
straight out of the cases. These are set up and feel so great. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice something on the specs on this, and I, I, I it didn't jump out to me, but when I first got hands on and was kind of noodling on it, um, these this has elixirs, and they feel really? yeah. Um, the other strings are, or the other guitars are strung differently, but yeah, this has elixir tens, um, which I sometimes use. So, um, in fact, that's what's on my last Paul right now. So, what does this felt one like have? home. Um, they were GHS boomers in a different cage. Okay, boomer. Um, well, let's move on to a guitar that a lot of people don't know a ton about because Gibson doesn't make it right now. They don't, sadly. Um, so this is Heritage's H530. Mm -hmm. um, sounds kind of similar to a 330. Uh, yeah. And it feels and is built and kind of sounds similar to a 330, mm -hmm. but a 330 from Gibson, ES330, is not around. Right not now. around, not currently in production. Um, so the closest reference point you might have to this might be a casino. Mm -hmm. But enough about other stuff. The H530, um, full hollow body, mm -hmm. no center block. This is a hollow body, just like you know some other ones. These are Lawler P90s in here. Sound awesome, super warm, very, very pretty sound. You know? They're Lawler P90s with Almico 5s, so they're like yeah. warm, but have like, if you need it, oh, there's they'll like rock some and roll. punch. They'll rock yeah, and roll. they're very cool pickups. Um, so yeah, I mean, just like most semi-hollows out there, this will be, you know, ply top. Um, but like Chris was talking about earlier, this one does have locking bridge on there, uh, which is cool, kind of upgraded thing. Nice looking tailpiece. Um, yeah, I mean, this guitar, I've been a real fan of the Casino mm -hmm. since we've gotten in and we've talked highly about it. But, you know, this, this thing is just awesome. This is a vintage Sunburst. Um, also, you know, just it's that's what it is. So, yeah, we... Quickly, so the casino, the U.S. casino being in the store has made it one of our favorite guitars. We talked about that in a previous video. Yeah, This is right up there for me, maybe even surpassing it. The feel is so fantastic. But there's something so alive and acoustic about these fully yeah. hollow body, thin hollow body guitars. Yeah. Where you kind of get the best of both worlds because it's got that thinness. It's not really deep. Um, but it's got that resonance. And, you know, I will say compared to some other very thin acoustic guitars that some manufacturers have put out on the market where people are like, oh, that's a good couch guitar, um, and it's really meant for the stage. This is a good couch acoustic guitar. Yeah. No, it's, it's so kind of present and loud on its own. Um, and then we should compare it to its stable mate that's full in the middle. Oh, yeah. And this is the uh, 535. Yep, 535. Now, this guitar, like I said, warm sound and... We had the amp settings here mm -hmm. in the demo, but we had the amp setting exactly the same. This immediately gave me a kind of nice jazz vibe with a little bit of bite that you can dig into. Um, that thing is a rock and roll machine. This is awesome. So obviously there's historic precedent here of where this design came from. The ES-335 is what the 535 you know, would have originally been based upon. Um, but this, I would say, has some substantial upgrades and also some differences to it that I don't think a lot of people notice when it comes to the heritage. Um, I have a, a 335. I think they're fantastic. It's called the Burst Killer for a reason. You know, a lot of people don't realize that when it was introduced in 58, um, its it sales kind of went through the roof as Les Paul sales went downhill. That should tell you a lot. I own both, so I'm not hating. I'm just telling you what's what, you this know? This guy hates over here. So, yeah, these are extremely versatile guitars. And, yeah, they're blues machines. They're rock machines. They're, I mean, as Dave Grohl has shown, you can do pretty much whatever you want on this style of a guitar. Um, I love the look. I love the feel of it. I love the weight of it. This has both the locking uh, tunematic on the bridge and the stop bar tailpiece. Definitely an upgrade there. All of the... Just everything is really high-end materials and hardware and pickups and, and everything. Also 59 Seymour Duncan. Yep, also 59. So the same thing that's in the H150 is what you're going to find here. And although if you hear a difference, that's because guitars respond a little bit differently. It's not just pickups. Construction also kind of matters. Um, so yeah, fantastic you know, straightaway, normal connection. Do you know what's different about this guitar than like a, a 335 would be? Tell me what's different. It's also different than on your uh, 330 or your 530 over there. I have an idea, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to sound dumb. It's thinner. I, that's not what I was going to say. What were you going to say? It's red. Say, yeah, it's looking good. <laughs> um, so 
Tell me about the depth then. So it's a little thinner. Um, it's thinner than the 530. It's thinner than a 335 would be. Um, just a skosh, but it is a little thinner on the rim. Otherwise, the construction is going to be the same where it's a five ply maple poplar. Um, and I like the dot inlays on this. You know, really nice rosewood fingerboard again. And of course, that headstock with the those heritage, nice tuners. So, yeah, I mean, so pretty. And all these are nitro finish. Got to be nitro. As yeah. it has to be. Yeah. Well, I got to play all three of them. Now, like I said, between these two, the amp settings are exactly the same. It's a Blues Junior. Um, you know, it's got the channel volume up and then the master down just a little bit. Oh. So you can, a little, and then, you know. Um, so we're working the master and the channel volume, try and get a little growl in there with the fat switch on, but then the EQs are up straight up all the way. They all three sounded wildly different, which I really like because different constructions, like mm -hmm. these are wildly different guitars. They should not sound exactly the same. Right. They all sound great, but like Chris said, they all came out of the box, set up perfectly and, and very, very cool. So let's take a listen, and then we'll tell you some other thoughts on the other side. Thank you. 
There you have it. Other thoughts. Yeah, let me get some other thoughts out there. These came in yesterday mm-hmm. um, when we were on the sales floor, and then I just heard Heritage showed up, and I was not expecting them to be there that quickly, um, but it got me very excited. Thank you. Now, yeah, Heritage. thank you, Gerald. Um, yes. So we had a guy hanging out in the store, and maybe he's watching the video, but I don't think he knows that we have YouTube videos, so maybe not. And he said. You got Gibson, why Why do you need Heritage? And I thought that was a fair question, but my first response was, you got New York Strip, why do you need ribeye? Different strokes for different folks, man. Yeah, and it's like, it kind of is has the strongest claim to these, these guitars, these designs, these, designs, these styles, yeah. outside of any other company making guitars that are like this. Now, You've seen recently we have Eggle guitars, and mm-hmm. uh, Patrick James Eggle is making fantastic, but not really quite s- traditional like this. It's it's, you know, it's a more modern. It's it's its own. It's thing. kind of bridges the gap, I think. Yeah, it's kind of traditional and modern in those guitars. But yeah, if you wanted something that's historically built, by the way, we I should clarify when they bought that factory that the Gibsons had been made in, they got the machinery too. Yeah. The old presses and the dupla carvers and, you know, if you wanted something that, you know, a 59 was built on, yeah, it's I think, in the Kalamazoo. Yeah. So, I mean, this company has a strong claim to these designs, but they're also so highly regarded by the people that play them. Yeah. Um, and they are boutique guitars. They're made on a smaller scale. They are very, very premium. And the price on them is pretty hard to argue with. That yeah. You're getting something that's made in that factory with, with, you know, I think the way Gerald put it is every single one of these guitars touches a tool that was used in, you know, Gibson Kalamazoo. Yeah. Um, and they're, I mean, they're primarily hand-built instruments still, and the attention to detail yeah. is phenomenal. I mean, yeah. so the nut work, the finish at the nut, the fretwork, it's kind of like any place your eye sits, it's really, really well done. What you'd expect from what we, you know, again, a small boutique shop. But to me, one of the telltale signs is you can you can pick up a lot of semi-hollow or hollow body guitars and kind of peer through an F-hole and see things that they know most people won't see. And, yeah. it, you know, 
Um, and that's across brands and across price points. And this is just perfect. Yeah, they're super clean. I will also be honest with you from my side, working here, I'm sure Chris is the same way. When we get another famous cherry semi-hollow body electric guitar and I open up the case, sometimes I'm worried Yeah. of what I'm going to find inside because we don't show you the stuff that we got to send back, but there have been times that I've seen wood chips in the case and mm -hmm. I've seen glue on the inside and I've seen headstocks broken off. And it was such yeah, a UPS breath. seems to be like having a, a, a competition of how many headstocks they can break at a time. UPS or FedEx or yeah, I don't know, but it comes. They're just in shipping. the messenger. <laughs> um, but I will say that I was Oops. so nicely relieved when I opened up all these cases and they're all spotless and just yeah. really really nice. Cases are nice. The stuff that you get in the case is cool. Um, so I mean, that's why we want both. We're never gonna not have Gibson. We love Gibson, but we, do. we love having options as well. And I think that some people will really resonate with buying a beautiful Gibson and some people will resonate with this and they don't have to be two different people. They can be the same person. Yeah, you can resonate with both. You know, I, I own a custom shop, Les Paul. Yeah. Would I purchase an H150 or a 535 or 530? Yeah. I'm seriously considering it um, and some of their other guitars and yeah. maybe a custom core, or, you know, different guitars doing different things. Yeah. I, again, I love the fact that, you know, here's a variation and here's a good reason to have it, right? If you, if you like a, a Les Paul style guitar and you want a Bigsby on it, Gibson doesn't really offer that. Um, Unless some, you want one of those uh, Brazilian Murphy Labs. Right. Sometimes in, in the custom shop, they'll do something that has a, a Bigsby, but otherwise it's aftermarket and you're taking it somewhere or you're doing it yourself. Um, and so I, I really think, you know, and this is what we find a lot with uh, boutique companies is they're kind of easier to work with um, and they tend to have because they're they're doing less production so I yeah. mean there's reasons for it just to be fair but um, you know they can say hey we're going to do this option with a Bigsby and it's it's it is what it is and it's not a big thing yeah and I think that's cool Heritage does a lot of cool stuff um, we these are kind of three you know classic models I'm trying to, I was going to say core models, but the custom core is a different thing. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to be showing you, yeah, these are the, these are pillars. However, they got, you know, uh, the Eagle and they got, I mean, they got a bunch of different stuff. They got the H-150s with P90s. They've got the whole custom core line. And then they've got some very, very cool kind of limited stuff that mm -hmm. that's one. I mean, you see us with acoustic guitars. We love when brands like Taylor say put out a, you know, fall limited, that's just a small run. And we don't see that a ton from electric brands. Sometimes from Fender, we get it with some FSRs, but mm -hmm. I like the thought that they're constantly making cool new things with different finishes. And those things are priced exactly the same as what the standard model would be. Um, but you know us, we like to compare things. We like to have options and represent the things that we really like. These are great examples of these types of guitars. We'll obviously be comparing them to their... Uh, to Tellys and Strats, for sure. Tellys and Strats, and, you know, maybe some <laughs> maybe some acoustics. Maybe some Les Pauls and 335s in um, a casino or something. Yeah, so I think the comparisons will be great. We have Heritage, and we have Gibson, and we have Eggle, and we have, you know, like, we're, we're getting cool things in here this year. It's the first time in a while that I think we've had new, very compelling electrics from different brands that we haven't carried that yeah. we just love so much. So it's a good time. Along with Heritage, as a sneak peek, comes Harmony as well. So we'll be showing you those. Um, and we will be just, you know, we're, we got all kinds of new stuff this year. I want to take a silhouette home. It's Spoiler silhouette alert. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so very cool guitars. If you want more information, or you want to purchase these guitars, you can go to our website at alamomusic.com where you can see our photography, you can check out all the specs, you could add it to cart. You can or, add it to cart. Or of course, yeah. if you have questions, you can chat with us online in the store or over the phone. We're always here to help you out to find the guitar of your dreams. Maybe it says Gibson, maybe it says Heritage, maybe it says something else. That's the great thing about life, there's options. And some of those options are really, really great. Yeah. So. Anyways, that's all for now. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, you turn on notifications, like our videos, and uh, keep coming back for more. We'll see you next time.